Now let's take a little break from October CMS and learn about CSS grids. And I'm not talking about the grids or grid systems that you get with the foundation framework or bootstrap framework or any other CSS framework. I'm talking about real native CSS grids. Uh, the browser support for this is not good as of right now it's actually going to be pretty good uh, around March so the Chrome is going to uh, come out with support for it uh, Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer already kind of supports it but it's using its own specification um, now this tutorial is not going to be something super comprehensive about it uh, we're just going to do the basics but if you want to learn more about css grids and you should because in i don't know six months time on a, or a year's time there will be people that will be using css grids very extensively so for that uh, you have this site grid by example by rachel andrew and you have uh, you can learn about grid layout right here. There are also some video tutorials, page layouts, UI patterns, and so on. In this video, I'm just going to show you the basics and show you how cool uh, CSS grids actually are. Okay, so first of all, before you begin, if you want to test out grids, uh, you can't, uh, they don't come with uh, Chrome, uh, right out of the box, you have to enable them in flags. So you go to Chrome, uh, flags, and then you search for web platform, experimental web platform features, Mac, Windows, and so on, and you enable it. As you can see, it's already enabled for me, but uh, uh, you probably don't have it enabled, so enable them, and then you will be able to use grids. Okay. Uh, the same thing is, I think, for Firefox. Uh, just search the uh, search Google for how how to enable those flags, and then you will have support for it. Also, if you're using uh, Chrome Canary, uh, it comes with the grids out of the box, and I think Safari Nightly uh, also comes with grids out of the box. As I said, most of the major browsers, so Chrome, Safari and Firefox are going to implement support out of the box for grid uh, in March. So when they release their new versions. As of right now, we are going to have to turn on these flags. Okay, so let's try to solve this age old question of how would we have uh, two columns one is going to be main and one is going to be sidebar and when this column has uh, many content in it so it has much content and this has little content in it how would they both be the same size in height so right now this looks like this so before we should do something like i don't know main So the main and sidebar are, uh, one is 70%, the other one is 30%, and now this looks like this. So, of course, we wanna have them side by side, so they are columns. So we can uh, float them. Right, now we have this container right here and this one right here. As you can see, they are not the same height. So one way to fix that, uh, we can just add display table to the container and make this uh, these divs a cell. So and not float them. So this is actually acting uh, like a table right now. So okay that's one way of dealing with it next thing we can do so a lot of browser browsers right now support flexbox so instead of that we can just uh, leave this as 7030 and display actually not here but here 
so we are going to display flex now this is much cleaner and we get the same result okay so let's try it like this so I'm just going to remove these classes now we just have divs okay save this uh, now this looks like this because uh, flexbox is going to uh, <clears throat> make this content right here much bigger than this one and also let me just first of all set the width of the container so that it's a bit smaller and this doesn't work for us very much or oh, doesn't work for us good so let's try to do that but with grids so I'm just going to remove all of this I don't need it also I don't need this and instead of display flex I'm going to display grid and then I can just say what is going to be the width of our columns so let's say I want to have one column to be 70% uh, and the other column to be 30% so to do that I just do grid template columns and then since I only have two columns I'm going to set the first column to be 70% and the second column to be 30% save this and now this looks like this okay so I didn't have to set the width of my divs at all next thing I can do I can even define a grid gap to be let's say 20 pixels okay uh, it's not columns it's column so it's column gap and uh, now we have that so I don't have to add some margins or so on to my divs I can just define the grid gap now uh, you can do all of this with flexbox but the difference between flexbox and grid is that flexbox is used only for columns and for rows so if you wanna have an element that will display something in a row or something in a column then flexbox is fine but if you wanna have more elements and uh, construct a real grid then you should use this grid when they come when the browsers uh, support it so what I mean by that is let's do something like this I'm going to delete this content okay and add two more divs right here right and now as you can see now I have four divs and grid automatically knows that this one should also be 70% and this one should be 30% what I can do next is as you can see these are all tied together uh, I can define uh, another gap or oh, let's put it to be 30% uh, 30 pixels okay so now we have those columns are like that also what I can do is because most of the grids will have the grid gap uh, equal uh, for top to bottom and left to right so I can just write instead of this I can just write grid gap and now we get the exact same thing so now we have the grid gap and of course I can duplicate all of these divs put them uh, beneath and now we get this now uh, what else you can do is uh, you can actually define the height of your rows so this grid specification automatically knows that this is actually a row so this is the first row the second row third row and fourth row so I can do something like this I can say grid template 
but not columns rows and I can set for the first row to be 100 pixels second row to be 200 pixels third row 300 and 400 pixels if I save this now we get so this is the first row this is the second row third row and so on also since we have a little bit more divs right here now what I can do is I can define bigger columns so actually uh, more columns so let's say we want to have 30% 30% and 30% and now we will have three columns and as you can see uh, these are their heights also one uh, more difference between flexbox and grid is if you did this with flexbox then this uh, right here so this cell right here would actually be here because flexbox is going to try to stretch your content out so this is much easier way to deal with that because in most cases you don't want that and then uh, in flexbox you would have to add some fake div that will fill out this space and so on of course just like with flexbox you can also do nested grids so you can do nested flexboxes you can also do nested grids so let's try that I'm going to go let's say to this first div and give it a class of nested okay and then I'm going to take two more divs and put it right here so we have two nested divs so uh, we just go right here and I can do nested and for the div I'm just going to give it a border of I don't know uh, black just so that we can see it better and then I'm just going to give it a display grid and I'm going to set that grid to be uh, so we are going to have two divs and we are going to have two columns so those columns are going to be 50-50 okay let's check it out so first of all I would have to remove this content right here because we don't need it and now as you can see this looks like this uh, but this is because this height of uh, of this row is I think 100 pixels so we don't want it to be 100 pixels we actually want the first row to be auto so the height of the row should be calculated by the content in it okay so now this looks much better uh, let's try to give it a grid gap of also 20 pixels and as you can see this doesn't look very good right now it doesn't look very good because well actually I don't know what exact reason is for that but it uh, probably has something to do with the calculation of uh, how uh, those grid cells should spread out but we can uh, go around it by using a new fraction unit for the grids so since we have two columns we can just do one fr and one fr so this would be half and half if i save it as you can see this looks much better right now also you can do the same thing right here so if you want equal widths of the columns of your three columns you can just do right so these are fractions now uh, since you you saw that this uh, spread out a little bit because 30 percent and 30 percent and 30 percent does not equal a hundred percent it equals a 90 percent but when doing this fraction units then it's going to be uh, all of the columns are going to be exactly the same also you do you can do something like two-thirds so if I do this now this column is going to take up two-thirds of the space and these ones are going to take up one-third of the space 
and we can do something like now like this and now it looks this grid looks like this right so these are the fraction units that you can use uh, with your grids okay so i think this is it uh, for this video i'm just going to stop here as i said this is not a comprehensive video of css grids it's just something to get your feet wet and if you want to know more about them please check out rachel's site and check out all of the ui patterns and examples that the rachel has made for uh, css grid i may do another video about this with some more complex examples in the future uh, but i will have to think about that and uh, if you're interested i will probably do it so this has been it for this video you can ask me questions on facebook or on twitter also if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you like the channel uh, and the content i put out you can maybe subscribe to it thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one